Welcome to the Moms Making Six Figures podcast, where it's all about real women, real stories, real inspiration. And now your host and creator of Moms Making Six Figures, Heidi Bartolotta. Thank you for being with me today. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. So I'm here today with my new friend, yes. Whitney Bator. I pronounced that I correctly this That's time. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> and you are a dentist. I am. I'm a general dentist mm-hmm. here in Boise. Will you talk a little bit about your background, the associations, your teaching, just kind of everything about your professional background? Yeah. So I don't know how far back you want me to go, but um, I'm originally from Washington, and I grew up in a small town there in central Washington. Um I'm the oldest of three kids, so I have two younger brothers and two parents who worked full-time and have always worked full-time. I think what kind of gave me the impetus to kind of pursue the career that I have is watching my parents work really, really hard for a long time. Mm -hmm. Um, My mom is one of nine kids, and so she grew up with very little. And so from the time she was really young, she encouraged me to... Um, not only work, but work in a career that um, would allow me a lot of freedom and um, something that I was passionate about. Mm -hmm. And so um, she and my dad have just always encouraged me to find a career and a profession and not just a, uh, I don't want to say it like that, but not just a job that Mm -hmm. um, could be taken away from me at any point. And so um, that kind of led me into the healthcare field, and that's kind of what inspired me. And so I thought for a long time I might do veterinary or I might do medical. And then the lifestyle associated with dental is what led me that route. And so I went through high school. I went through undergrad um, and then landed at the University of Washington Dental School and was there for four years, got my um, doctor of dental surgery degree, and then I decided to do a one-year hospital residency after that. And so that got me a certificate in hospital dentistry. Um, That was just a one-year program. Um, During that time, I also met my husband uh, when we were in undergrad together. So he kind of went through this whole process with me. Mm -hmm. And um, after I finished residency, I taught at the University of Washington for a couple of years in their oral medicine department. And um, at that point, my husband and I were... He had finished his residency, and we were kind of looking, well, where do we land? What do we do now? And this opportunity opened up in Boise, and so that landed us here. And during all this, we had had a couple of kids. And when we moved to Boise, I didn't have a like a secured position in, a, in the dental field at this point. And so I started volunteering with the Genesis Community Health Clinic and just kind of networking and meeting people and then landed where I am now. Mm-hmm. So. Which is a great place. It's a great place. Yes. <laughs> great people, a great team. And you have three children now. I do. I have three, which is crazy to say. I have a six-year-old, a four-year-old, and just turned two-year-old. Mm-hmm. So, I wanted to ask you about um, the investment in school. So mm-hmm. we have a lot of younger listeners, I was explaining to you. we have, That's kind of our growing base, which right. is interesting. And I think that there's a lot of younger women that are evaluating, do Mm -hmm. I invest more in education? Do I go more of a career, try it out, and then go back to more education? And you are on the other side of that. You and your husband, really, because you're both in the medical profession. Right. So what wisdom do you have? I know you love your profession and you're Mm -hmm. obviously very, very good at it. You didn't even talk about some of the organizations that you're a part of. but, (laughs) But talk about that because there's you know, there's a lot that goes along with the time invested, the resources invested. For sure. Um, So to kind of go back, you know, when you're going down this path, when you decide, like I decided in high school, I want to be a dentist. And I just started doing those steps to get me there. Um, There was never this, like, I need to have these other experiences before I get get down this pathway. It was just like, this is what I'm doing. That's how I'm going to do it. Um. And so you get, you know, you get to dental school and then you start taking out these loans for 
$30,000 or $50,000. And it's just like play money at that point. You don't really think about it. It's just like, this is what I have to do to get to my end goal. Mm -hmm. Um, So then you get through dental school and you look at, you know, you have six months to start repaying your loans and you're like, oh man, this is like real. (laughs) This was real money the whole time. Um, And so that for me was eye opening because you saw, you know, at the time I went through school, we came out with a you know a couple hundred thousand dollars of debt, which mm-hmm. you go you know going into it, but you don't really know how you're, you don't really have a plan for how you're going to get out of that um, when you finish. And so, and also you probably don't really think about it because you've never had to pay pay back any no. substantial amount of money at that point. You don't really think about what those payments actually look like. Absolutely. Yeah. And for me, so I went from high school to undergrad to dental school, to residency, to working. So there was never like me, I I never afforded myself the opportunity to try something different. Mm -hmm. And so if I had to go back and do it uh, differently, I'd probably look at options for, you know, loan forgiveness plans, um, scholarships that, you know, and I had a fair number of scholarships through dental school that helped me, but um, ways that I could have, could minimize my, my debt at that point. Mm -hmm. Um, Certainly being at an in-state school helps that. There's some people that come out with double what I came out if they're at an out-of-state school or a private dental school. Mm -hmm. Um, So I think that would help. And then, you know, looking at like military or Navy or those kind of things that, you know, you'll give them your time investment afterwards, but you come out of that relatively Mm debt-free. So doing that or, um, you know, fortunately for me, I love dentistry and I landed in a good spot, but there are some people who get down this path and they've gone through all the hoops and then realize, Oh, I don't really love this. And they're in so much debt and then they're kind of pigeonholed to keep doing it until they're out of it or until they come up with some other. That's what, that was one of the things I was going to say. I feel like for you, you're actually really fortunate in a way because you really love what you do. But there's a lot of people that get to where you are and decide, wow, this actually is really not the profession for yeah. me. Yeah. And, yeah. and now I have $300,000 <laughs> in stu- you know, student loan debt that I have to pay back. So, Absolutely. Yeah. So if I could tell my younger self anything, it would probably be even take some time. Like I was very focused, like laser focused on what my goal was, which I think was great. And it got me here quickly. Um. But that may not be the case for everybody in terms of ending up loving what they do. Mm -hmm. And so I think just allowing yourself, my younger self or these younger listeners, the freedom and the space to experience other things before they decide they want to go that route. Yeah. And is it? Your husband is also mm-hmm. a physician, yeah. not in dentistry, but do you think he would say the same thing? It's kind of probably, I think he would. Yeah. Um, yeah. And he's, you know, even more specific and gave an even more time investment than I did. And so, again, fortunately for him, he loves his job. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think if we could do anything differently, it would be take a year or two, try something else might like something else. And he and I share the same sentiment and that if you want to make six figures, there's a lot easier ways that take very little investment in the beginning, Mm -hmm. not that kind of investment in the beginning. So if you're doing it for the money, I think I would discourage that Yeah, because you put a lot of investment and time and sacrifice into it. And there's easier ways to to get to that six figure point if that's your end goal. I think that's interesting because I really do think for most people that anything that you do for money Mm -hmm. typically ends up not being the right thing. Right. Yeah. 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 So I think, you know, for anything in the healthcare field, you're working with people, you're working on people. Most of the time, our patients are scared. They've, we do this every day, but they don't do it every day. Mm -hmm. And, um, you have to really, the underlying has to be that you care about the person and you care about the people. And if you, you know, proceed through your career with that focus and with that culture, I think you're all, you'll be fulfilled. You're going to take really good care of people and the money is just the bonus. Mm -hmm. And you're a mom of three. Yes. So how have you navigated that? Because I think that 
you're young. Yes. You have a very serious profession and you have three children, which are each an individual full-time job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a different one every day. Yeah. But yeah. Um, so it's kind of, I think, cool that I got to experience my career. I, you know, I worked for a few years before we had kids. Mm-hmm. Um, and I kind of went through the whole process thinking I wasn't sure if I wanted kids. Um, do you feel funny saying that? I do feel I- funny saying that because I like... Now that I have kids, they're like my world. They flipped my whole world upside down in the best way. Mm -hmm. Um, But I think it's hard for women to say that. And it's not always the right choice for some, right? But it's a hard thing to say as a woman. It is hard to say. And I think, you know, just the way that our culture is, is you are raised to the expectation is to have kids. Mm -hmm. Um, And so when you choose not to, I think that's awesome. If you don't want them, don't have them. Mm but for me, it wasn't, it wasn't a obvious. It was like a very intentional thought process and decision. And I'm glad we ended up having children, but kind of, um, how I, so I went through school, went through residency, worked for a few years. And then we had our son when my husband was in his second year of residency. And I was working at that point, five or six days a week, uh, before kids just to try to pay down that debt and my husband's debt as well. And, um, so then I had my son and I was like, I certainly am not working six days a week anymore. So I went down to three to four days and then fast forward a couple of years, we had my daughter who's four now. And, uh, I went down to two days, but switched to a different, uh, position, different dental office. And so that was kind of a, a, a really strategic move because I was able to work two days in a different kind of business setup and make pretty much the same that I was making at six days. So it felt, it was nice. And that I could cut back hours, still be with my kids, support mm-hmm. my family, um, but not have to put in that kind of time. Um, and then we kind of found this homeostasis for a few years that way when we were in Washington. And um, that's kind of, Kind of how that went, but how how did I feel going through all of that was, um, it was really hard to be kind of the the sole breadwinner at that point while my husband was in residency and have two little kids. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think the biggest thing I've learned kind of through that process in terms of how to balance is set really clear boundaries with work and with myself, and then stick to it. And if and it, I'm the worst at this, but if you like ask me to do something a really really hard time saying no and I think putting that boundary up like saying you know to my current practice I can work two days and I can work a little more when I need to but like two is kind of my limit Mm -hmm. for now um feels good um and then the second kind of piece to that um is I had a really really great mentor tell me you can do anything you can do anything but you can't do it all at the same time And so I've always been this like all or nothing mindset, um, which is good and bad. But she told me like, you can do all, you can do it all, but you can't do it all right now. Yeah. And so giving myself kind of that grace, grace and that space to relax and like let myself just enjoy the season I'm in Mm -hmm. rather than, and know that that's not going to be the season forever. Well, it just gave me peace at work and at home. So I think it's really great wisdom. Boundaries are something that I feel like comes up probably almost in every single yes. one of my podcasts. It's hard. It's <laughs> really hard. It is. And I think, especially as moms and as women, mm-hmm. and we're more inclined to want to give and sometimes overly so, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. But the wisdom is definitely there because you need to take care of the things that you need to take care of at the time. Certainly. And I think kind of just how the, you know, dental training is or medical training in general is this like very all invested, Mm -hmm. self-sacrificing, you just do what you got to do to get it done. And I had a dental school professor tell me this is a marathon, not a sprint. And so I think to get through that, it's, you're kind of in sprint mode, like for a while. And then once you get out, you're like, okay, like this, what I've been doing is not sustainable. Yeah. So, and motherhood like shines a light on that for sure. Because mm-hmm. if 
So you're burning candles at both ends. You can't get that. So you brought up motherhood. Mm-hmm. So I'll ask you one of the questions that you know I'm going to ask. Yeah. Your biggest parenting advice. Yeah. What do you think? There's like so many things that I've learned. But I think the biggest thing is um, what motherhood has taught me in general is uh, not only perseverance, like just keep on trucking. Even when it's hard, you just got to keep going and get through it. And that's kind of helped me in both motherhood and my profession, but also uh, to lead by example. And again, that can you can apply that to work or home. Mm-hmm. But those littles are watching you all the time. And they're watching you be kind to yourself. They're watching you be kind to others. They're watching how hard you work at work. Um, And I think that is a really great responsibility and a really great blessing and has brought me the most joy of anything I've ever done. Mm -hmm. Um, It's also super hard, though, because it, you know, going through in the culture, again, of of dentistry and surgery and healthcare is... um, you just kind of put your head down and do it. And so you get really good at studying and you get really good at clinical skills. But for a while, I feel like you neglect your relationships and you neglect people because you have to, in mm-hmm. a way, at least I did, to kind of get there. And so motherhood has totally flipped that because it's kind of shined a light on all the places I needed work. And so in a, in a great way, that's a blessing because it's really allowed me the time and the space to work on myself Mm -hmm. and become a better person for my family and my kids. And I think it also really helps me be a better leader at work too. How do you feel about, I think that there's a lot of, um, we as women get a lot of push to really invest in one or the other. Mm -hmm. And what you're saying is you really married being a very strong professional, but also a really amazing mom. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's what you said is so, um, I don't know, it touches my heart, I think, because one of the things that I think is the women that I respect the most are really good in both areas, but they know when to be really good. Yeah. 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 And I had another mentor be like, there's no such thing as balance. It's like you have all these plates And which plate do you need to work on right now? Mm -hmm. And so I think I like that analogy because, you know, balance is elusive. It's like you just put out the biggest fire, I feel like. (laughs) And sometimes that's at work and sometimes that's your kid having a meltdown and it just uh, or your kid needs more attention or, Mm -hmm. you know, you have to work harder at a case at work or whatever. Um, So I think it's more just recognizing when that recognizing which plate needs attention mm-hmm. um and then so and when then do you remember that. when you hit six figures yeah I did it was um right after I finished my hospital residency so straight out of school first job mm-hmm. um which is kind of surreal because you know you've been working for it and working for it and then it's like and you know it's coming as soon as you get your first dental job it's pretty much you're pretty much there mm-hmm. um so that was back in 2013 and that's when I was working five and six days but you knew it was going to happen yeah um and it's again, different than other professions it is. where it's a build for you you kind yeah. of step into you just it kind of step you've... into it and yeah that's your first you sign your contract and that's where you're there um but for me it was more again it wasn't like the monetary it was just like the confirmation that I'd done all the things that I needed to do to get the degree, Mm -hmm. basically. Um, And it was this sense, you know, I was proud of myself and this sense of, like, a really strong sense of camaraderie with my classmates, like, that we did this really hard thing together. Mm -hmm. And then just being really grateful that I had such a great family that was supportive and friends that understood when I needed to study versus, you know, spend time. Mm so I was just super grateful for all the people that had helped me get there because none of us do that alone if you go down that route. So yeah. it's really cool, cool time. So book or podcast? Both. Yeah. Is that, is that allowed? Um, <laughs> I <laughs> Children's books? Children's, tons of children's books. Um, 
<laughs> yeah, I have tons of those. Um, podcasts more recently um, because I can work out with it or mm-hmm. water the garden with it or that kind of thing. Listen to it in the car. Is there um, one you recommend? Well, I've been listening to yours most recently. <laughs> um, but I also really love Brene Brown. Mm-hmm. Um, she has one called Unluckiness, and I just love her. I she agree. does such good research and um, just really yeah. makes you think. Um, and then there's some, like, nutrition ones. I'm super into food, so I listen to a lot of nutrition podcasts. And... Oh, you'll have to give them to me. We'll post them with yeah. your podcast so there's people can ones. listen to them if they want to. And then some dental ones, you know. because But everybody should nurse. listen to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so a few of those. And then books. I love, like, if I'm reading about parenting stuff, I really love, like, a physical book because I can reference it easier. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah. Oh. So anything that I didn't ask you? I think we really dove into the student loan and debt, and I think that that's really powerful. So thank you for doing that with me. Yeah, no that's problem being pretty vulnerable. Um, But is there anything that I didn't ask you about your career track, about being a mother, about being a professional that you think, oh, I have this nugget Mm -hmm. that maybe would really benefit someone that's listening? I think just, um, you know, we touched on a little bit, but allowing yourself grace. For me, I'm harder on myself than anyone will ever be on me. And that when you're trying to balance both and both matter a lot mm-hmm. to me, um, that's been the hardest part of balancing motherhood and, and, um, dentistry. Um, and then just allowing people to help you because that's hard for me too. Yeah. And I think that's hard for a lot of us because it's always been like, well, if I do more and I do this, then it'll get done. But there's a point where there's an easier way if you just let people help you. <laughs> and so that's been really helpful for me too. It's just getting to the point where, where I've found my people and I found a community mm-hmm. and found a work family that I let in and let it help me. It's been really, really uplifting. Thank you for You're taking welcome. the time to do this with me. Thanks for having me. It's really fun. Yeah, it was great. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for listening to the Moms Making Six Figures podcast. If you enjoyed this podcast, please take a moment to leave a review on iTunes. To learn more about Moms Making Six Figures, head over to momsmakingsixfigures.com. That's right, momsmakingsixfigures.com.